<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from today. This is uh, Ruth with uh, Mother of Nations uh, show, more. As we all know, this uh, uh, program holds every last Saturday of every month. And I'm so excited that you're here with me today, you know. We're going to share so many things together, have fun, and have a great time on today's episode. And like the flyers that I sent out uh, the, this month episode, we go to talk majorly on food, you know, how food can enhance our fertility. How can food enhance our fertility in both uh, men and women waiting, trusting God for the fruit of the womb? This is Mother of Nations program. You are highly welcome. I welcome you. Thank you for joining me. Just sit back and let's, you know, have a great time together. Thank you so much for showing up. And today on this uh, episode today, I am not alone. Today is loaded. <laughs> I'm not alone. My husband is right here with me. Uh, Pastor Emmanuel Adebola, can you please say hello to our audience? Hello. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. And I have a couple, wonderful couple with me today. <laughs> uh, I have Katie. Can you please say hi to our audience? <laughs> Hi. Hi, thank Love you so everyone. much. Thank you so much. Out of your busy schedule, I'm so excited that you made it. And I have the lovely, a whole lovely husband right here also. Matt, can you please say hello to our audience? Hello, everybody. It's good morning. <laughs> thank good you. Evening. So <laughs> that's a good one thank you so much um i'm so happy and i appreciate you uh joining me on this show today and i believe strongly that our audience are ready you know to learn one or two things and i'm also i'm ready to learn one or two things from you guys and i believe strongly there is somebody out there that today episode is for so let's enjoy this moment together so, you know, this program, like I always say, it's not about me. It's not about Ruth. Adibola is about God. It's about, you know, letting people know that you don't have to give up because uh, uh, fruitfulness is of God. It's a decree that God has made that we should be fruitful. And just to encourage someone out there that it will happen, not to give up, that just keep hoping on God. And today, like I said earlier, because of our time, we have a limited uh, time and we're going to be talking about how food can enhance uh, fertility. So like I said, I have Matt and Kate in the house. Uh, I would like you to introduce yourself. What do you do as we dive into the program? Over to you. <laughs> Maybe ladies first. Ladies first. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, my name is Catherine Lawrence. Hi, uh, my husband Matt and I own a business called Food Saved Me, and we are nutritionists. We um, provide education to the community on a variety of diseases and ailments and um, how nutrition can affect those. Um, we love talking about nutrition and we're just fascinated by the power of the healing power um, of what foods can do for us. So I'll let Matt explain the rest of our business. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Matt, um, the, the other half of Miss Catherine's uh, wonderful uh, opportunity here to speak with you. Um, and other half of our business, like Catherine said, is uh, about nutrition and health. Um, we also have a cooking business um, where we show people that's an extension of what we do here, uh, teaching nutrition and health and how food can impact your health. But we also want to educate people on like the right equipment to use. There is cookware in the world that, you know, we use every single day. And um, it's putting literally chemicals and heavy metals into our food that go into our body that has potential to, to in, uh, interact with our body in a negative way. And so we have a particular product line that doesn't do that, that doesn't put heavy metals or chemicals into your food. So it's high quality. So you're actually only getting what you put into your cookware, which is the food that you're cooking. Uh, and so those two married together between nutrition and the, the better quality of your, your cooking utensils in terms of your, in your kitchen, uh, it allows you to have the best opportunity for maximum health. And that's what we do in our business. We, it's fantastic. We love educating and teaching. Awesome. Also, also, thank you so much. Yeah. So, you know, it's not uh, about waiting. It's not about waiting for the baby to come. Is about what we're what you are doing while waiting. You know, you're seeking medical help, 
you're praying. At the same time, we need to eat good food that could enhance the fertility, you know. So, uh, my husband, I don't know if you have something to say before uh, we dive into the questions. Ah, uh, well, I'm just excited that we have Kat and Matt uh, <laughs> with us today. I know the time is so limited. Uh, right. So, let's just dive into the questions. Okay, thank you. And uh, to our audience, please, if you have any question, don't hesitate to uh, ask your question as we go on. Please, they are ready, ready, more than ready to answer any question that you might have. So do not hesitate. And also, please share this uh, link, share this uh, video with someone that you know this uh, uh, program could be of benefit to. Please don't hesitate to do that. And as you do, God bless you in Jesus' name. So to cut um, uh, math in the house, uh, I would like you to explain, um, how would you explain good food choices and their effect on fertility? Well, there are a lot. And Matt and I thought we would split it up a little bit that I could talk about what affects a woman's um, fertility and he can talk about uh, the male side of that. And right. what that would be good. <laughs> So I think I think previously we we thought, you know, personally and just um, uh, humans in general just kind of thought it, it was random. Right. And and it was just a matter of, of whether we would be blessed with um, with carrying a child. And and nutrition research has really um, caught up to that the last 20 to 30 years. And it turns out there's a lot of things nutritionally um, and physically that we're doing to our bodies that are actually limiting our fertility. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a really powerful connection. Uh, do you want me to go into those right now or or answer some um, less specific questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Matt, go ahead. Oh, I, I just think that what Katie said is exactly on point. I, uh, you know, we, we firmly believe that we are, you know, you are what you eat. If you have good health, um, it's probably because you're making good dietary choices. If you're having a less than ideal um, health outcomes, then you're probably have, you probably have um, a more poor diet. I think there's a lot of factors into those things. Hmm. So what we have, what we've seen is just over the courses of changes and, you know, and I can use myself as the, one of the main stories is, I was a person before I met Catherine who made very poor choices and I could literally feel the differences in the way my body performed and way it functions, especially when it came to re reproductive health. There's a mm -hmm. history of prostate disease in my family. And at 35 years old, I was experiencing those things, which also in turn affects, you know, your opportunity to have, you know, children, if that was a desire, it really wasn't at that time, but <laughs> it was, but, um, but I noticed that it was becoming a problem even at a young age. So, and, and that was because of my diet. And then after meeting Catherine, it certainly made changes because of, you know, the education that she gave me. And so knowledge is really powerful. It's just mm -hmm. once you apply it where it's, the, where it's the most effective. So you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't apply it, it doesn't really do much good. And I can tell you what you're going to, some of the information you guys are going to hear today is, is truly could potentially be life changing. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are what we hit. That is just the, that's just the key, you know. What you don't know, you don't know it, and that's does the that's does it. Uh, okay. Um, I would like you to share briefly. Maybe you have some list of food that you know that can enhance fertility, both in um, men and women. What are those food? You know, like some people might not know that there are some food that could boost the uh, fertility. Uh, can maybe, you see? Uh, maybe maybe before we go into that, I think okay. uh, sometimes also people connect with story. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Kat would love to share a story and just to let you guys know if you happen to live uh, close to the church Abundant Grace Embassy tomorrow we're going to be having Matt and Kat live with us so uh, you will have privilege to meet to meet them in person ask questions I mean out of their busy schedule they are doing yeah. this for us mm -hmm. they don't have to but they are doing this for you so you will have the privilege to meet with them ask questions and I believe Matt, we talked about a lot of exciting classes that they've, um, they're putting Put together. together also that you just see, there's a place of prayer, there's a place of fasting and so mm -hmm. on and so forth, there's a place of medical, but this time around, what we're talking about is food, because from Matt, I mean, from uh, Kat's story right now, you will notice, not that maybe she was not praying, it's not that maybe she was not, mm -hmm. I mean, 
doing that. Okay. Now, <laughs> you will see from us to, I mean, let me just keep quiet because I'm excited <laughs> to listen to the story. Right? Over to you. Over so to excited. You. Okay. <laughs> For the record, I'm always praying. I think. <laughs> um, but yes, I was, I was completely unaware, just ignorant on nutrition when my journey started. I didn't even realize I was in the middle of, you know, or God was in the middle of creating my story. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just had so little knowledge and awareness um, on food as it, as it relates to fertility. So my my story, real quick, about um, 17 years ago, uh, I used to be an engineer. And I was um, uh, working in corporate America, you know, just kind of doing my thing every day. And I, I started to have terrible pain. I actually got really, really um, sick in, in my abdomen. And it took a, a long time to, for the doctors, it took about eight or nine months um, to wow. actually diagnose what I had. They, you know, I was all kinds of misdiagnoses. When you have random pain in your abdomen, it's hard to kind of pin down. Um, but eventually I, I got to the right doctor who figured out what it was. And I had stage four endometriosis. Um, this is where endometriosis is when the, the lining in your uterus, that's really important to getting pregnant, um, starts to grow on the outside and it grows on other organs. And mine was stage four was all over um, my digestive organs and everything. And it was very painful. It caused adhesions. And um, I also had some uh, uterine cysts and fibroids and things like that. And so my doctor, you know, I was 27 and he said, he said, there is no cure for this. You are extremely high risk for endometrial cancer. So you need to um, have a hysterectomy as mm -hmm. soon as possible. And I, I was shocked because wow. I thought I, I said to him, "Oh my gosh, I want to have I want to have kids though. Yeah. I mean, I'm not having kids later." And he said, "No, there's no chance. You're, mm -hmm. um, you're completely infertile. You'll never have kids, so you might as well go ahead and do this." And um, I was devastated. I think I went home and made like a big pot of gumbo. <laughs> my feelings. <laughs> and, um, and I, I, I started, I asked him, I said, well, is it, is it the food I'm eating or, or something I'm doing? And there was so little research at the time around mm -hmm. that, especially that had flowed down to the medical uh, community at that point. He said, no, there's no cure for what you have. And there's no connection, mm -hmm. you know, with food or your lifestyle habits. And um, thank goodness my mother, uh, she's very insistent. She wanted grandkids yeah. and she started researching and pretty much, um, made me go to a nutritionist. And that's where I heard for the first time, like how, how certain foods could affect my reproductive system and, um, which ones could benefit it and, and the importance of a lot of things that we're going to talk about here. Um, and so I, I changed my diet overnight and, and not mm -hmm. it was reluctant. I didn't want to do it. I just wanted to tell my mom I had tried everything. Mm -hmm. I was <laughs> still, I still had the surgery scheduled and um, I ended up eating that way. It was uh, four or five weeks. Um, and I had noticed the pain had gotten better, but I didn't, I didn't think that my issue was gone. And um, so I went in for the procedure and the doctor woke us up about 30 minutes later or so. And he said, I don't know what's happened. This is a miracle. Wow. 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 <laughs> He was like about 95% of your um, endometriosis is gone. He says, you have oh my God. scarring. Yeah. I had some adhesions and a lot of scarring to show that I had had it for a long time. But my mom said, well, she, she changed her diet. And he oh. said, no, that's not it. <laughs> this is a miracle. And I believe in miracles. Wow. I never mm -hmm. seen that. But um, I think, I think that it was also um, using the foods that we've been given to, because wow. they're naturally healing for us when we don't mess with them, you know, when we leave them um, in their natural uh, form. So, so I, I, right then he decided not to do the hysterectomy. He said, let's wait, let's wait yeah. a minute six months and see what happens. And I remember inside kind of being disappointed that because I didn't know how to eat this new way. You know, it was very different from how I was raised in South Louisiana on like a Cajun Creole diet. And, and I thought, Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to 
eat this way forever. And um, so I continued for six months. And over that time, I lost. Yes, praise God. Um, <laughs> and over that time, I lost about 55 pounds. I got healthy. I was wow. very overweight. Wow. And that's going to matter here in a minute. Yeah. But um, yeah. then all of my my endometriosis never came back. And I started to notice some other things. I had fibroid cysts in my breasts. I had seven just my whole life, like my grandmother and my mother and my cousin all have them. Um, but I noticed those dissolved. And I thought, oh, I thought that was a genetic thing. But apparently my body works better um, when I'm eating fresh whole foods um, that fit the, the regimen that I'm going to share with you in a little bit. Okay. So, um, so long story short, left engineering, went to school for nutrition. I've been obsessed with it for the last 13 years. Wow. <laughs> um, I wanted to have babies. So I had three sons. And three sons. Wow. That's good. one. I think Matt's going to talk about that was a surprise. <laughs> uh, yeah. our, our that's, are, that is more powerful than you. <laughs> are five, eight, and ten. And oh, so, wow. When I look at them, it's a reminder of, oh, wow. of how God gives us food to to heal us and make us mm -hmm. strong. And and that knowledge combined with faith can can change change mm -hmm. everything. But yeah, the so I'm um, about to be 45, and and that five year old, he was a surprise at 40. I thought we were done, but. <laughs> You know, he just Matt, showed up. I was ramping up his soy intake, and I guess it just overcame all obstacles. Wow! Wow! So, yeah, honestly, your story. story could just take the whole thirty minutes of this show, uh, <laughs> and I, I'm so I, I mean, it's it's very intriguing because. Uh, you know, think, come to think about it, many people take medication. And most of these medications also do are created from the herbs that God gave to us. Mm. So why not eat the food? I mean, I mean, wrong. Like this kind of food. process. You know? right. and I, I think it's good we listen to my story. And by the way, if you are watching this, and as I said, if you are close to the church, Abaddon Grace Embassy, 3603 Shepherd Lane, you don't want to miss it tomorrow because... You will, I mean, you just hear the full story. And I think I saw Matt's picture when Matt was bigger than this. Why don't you share your story with our audience? Because there's also there's also a place of a weight loss when you're talking about fruitfulness, you're talking about fertility. Yeah. Both man and, and woman. woman. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 you want to share your story just in the next two minutes. Over to you, Matt. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll be brief. It's not quite as elaborate as Catherine's. Um, or as exciting, <laughs> <Sorry. so. laughs> no, I had a I had really poor food choices um, before meeting Catherine. Um, I, my I was married for, uh, to my my first wife. We had two children, uh, and she passed away. So as a single parent, you know, mm -hmm. trying to stay busy uh, and you know working and raising kids and activities. Uh, Ninety percent of our diet was really you know somebody else made it, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, in a couple short years, I put on 85 pounds. I uh, high blood pressure. My blood pressure was 199 over 100. Um, and sitting in a chair, high cholesterol. I was pre-diabetic, so I was just really in bad shape. At you know between 34 and 35 years old, and I meet Catherine, and you know she was like, uh, "You need to start eating healthier." My doctor said yeah. I need to start eating healthier. Um, he said I was really on the path of a stroke or a massive heart attack. So. I wasn't going to take any meds um, because I know what those things do. And along comes Catherine and she she shows me information on how to eat healthier. I didn't want to put my kids at risk of like losing another parent. So she changed. She helped me change my whole diet up in, in a few short years um, and working with her and, and eating with, you know, the foods that she helped me prepare. And uh, I lost 85 pounds. I got my blood pressure. Wow. Back. Wow. Thanks to so Katri. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, awesome. I mean if you're Absolutely. watching this, just say thank you, Katri. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You thank did you. a good job. You. Yeah. That's a good job. It's not easy to listen. So, I, carried, I carried a spare tire around my belly is what I basically wow. was doing. And, um, and my, you know what? Here's, here's, Here's here's what I'll say. Not not only did she impact my weight and my parents, my physical um, ability to to keep up with kids. I mean, five four boys. I mean, just you got to have the energy to keep up with four boys. Right. I have enormously um, um, uh, much more energy by losing all this weight. But there's going to be some information for for my my male friends that I want to encourage them to lose weight. Mm. 
just going to encourage you. There is a really good women, reason, ladies, you want your man to lose at least 20, 40, even 60 pounds. You're going to want well, somebody, it. Somebody, was, somebody is not clear. Maybe somebody <laughs> thought you said 8.5 pounds. Maybe you want to repeat that, that you actually lost. 80, yeah, 85 pounds. I have lost wow. 85 pounds. <laughs> I used to weigh around 250 pounds. 250 oh, wow. was my heaviest. So I'm down to about 175 Wow. I hover between 170 and 180, depending on like how the month goes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Let me hand over to Ruth to Wow. Wow. That, that was an interesting story, honestly. Honestly, honestly. That was the miracle. And you know, you know, why waiting for uh keys, fruitfulness. I believe there's just just one thing that sometimes we have to do for the table to turn around. Just little step, just little, you know, leap to take for the table to turn around. And uh, honestly, I'm so, so excited hearing this uh, testimony from you guys. That's a miracle. And I uh, thank God for your lives. And like I was saying before, like, the food, like the, the uh, car said, she changed her diet, you know. I would like you, if you don't mind, just, you know, quickly go over the food, the diet, you know, that you that you had while you're trying to, you know, get things together then. Go ahead, please. <laughs> okay. Well, so I, what I want you to take away from today is what creates fertility problems in women mm -hmm. is too much estrogen. Most of us, I mean, most of us around the world are just swimming in too much estrogen. And so there's a few dietary factors that um, affect that. And then um, Matt's going to add a few more for the guys. So. Okay. If we so estrogen is what will shut down our if we have too much, it will shut down our ability um, to to be pregnant um, and our ability to carry a baby. Um, and this is what leads to those hormone driven cancers later in life. Most are breast cancer, all that it's fueled by too much estrogen. So um, so one primary thing that we need to do is to get down to a healthy body weight. Um, when we have any kind of excess body fat, it's a production to start. It, it just, it's like a factory to start producing yeah. estrogen. So when we're, and so my problem, if you think about it, when I got sick, I was 185. So I had a lot of excess body fat, about, about 50 pounds worth, and I was producing all this estrogen. And so fertility rates are best. They're highest in women are just slightly thin, not overly thin, yeah. but just slightly. And so we know it's a direct proportion. The higher the BMI, the lower the fertility. Mm -hmm. So getting to a healthy weight is really important. And if we think about nature and, uh, you know, it kind of selects for us. So if nature feels like our body is not healthy and strong enough to carry a child, to provide for the child, then it does things. It has natural mechanisms to shut that down. So that's kind of what's happening there. Um, also, uh, well, I'll go into more detail with that later. But so body fat is really important. And if someone is um, classified as obese, they actually have three times the infertility rate as someone who's just at a healthy weight. And so it kind of amplifies um, with that the more extra body fat we have. Um, the, the, the worse, the more damaging it is for fertility. But I want to give you two food things that can help us manage that estrogen. Um, one is fiber. Fiber is found in all plant foods. The definition of fiber is plant roughage. The reason why it's so important to fertility is that fiber carries away these excess hormones from the body. And so if you think about it, like we are designed to eat a large variety of plants, right? And that's the only place we can get this fiber. Um, but most people only eat one or two veggies a day. We should really have nine to 11 plant foods a day. And so when our fiber intake is too low, it's not helping the body to get rid of this excess estrogen. And it's just staying there, recirculating, creating problems in our reproductive system. So a good goal is to hit um, about 40 grams, at least 40 grams of fiber a day. 
and that will optimize your fertility. And guess what else happens? Foods that have fiber, they're all, all these plants, they're all very low in fat and they have an abundance of nutrients. And so that's naturally going to help you lower your body weight, your body at, right. So it's it works in conjunction with getting to that ideal weight. So that is very, very good food thing to focus on. Um, the other beneficial food specifically for fertility is soy. Uh, soy is a phytoestrogen. And so we have these big, big, bad over of abundance of estrogen um, circulating in our blood. Um, soy will attach to the estrogen receptors on our cells and prevent those big estrogens from attaching. So that's very, very beneficial. Um, cultures who have the highest intake, food intake of soy also have um, the highest fertility rates um, of any, any other cult uh, cultures well above. So soy is very, very protective for anything um, hormone related. And when it prevents the estrogen from attaching, that means it's left in the blood and the estrogen can just take it away. Oh, wow. Also, yeah. <laughs> well, also, uh, thank uh, you. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. Before Matt comes, I, I believe maybe you want to take a drink. You want to quickly take a deep breath. So uh -huh. we'll be back after this 30 seconds commercial break. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Adigbola from Abundant Grace Embassy, and I want to personally invite you to worship with us at Abundant Grace Embassy this Sunday by 9 a.m. Okay, every Sunday at Abundant Grace Embassy is always an exciting moment in the presence of God. We have great environment for kids to play and to learn from their teachers at Kids Church. Every Sunday we receive inspiring and encouraging words. Come and enjoy the atmosphere of worship, fellowship with others. And maybe you are looking for a church or you are just relocating to our environment and you are looking for a change or you've been disappointed where you're current, currently worshiping and God is leading you to another worship location or you are looking for a church you could actually call a home our doors are open to receive you. Maybe you are sick, you need divine healing, you have an expectation you are trusting God for and you are just looking for a way to start with God. Our doors are always open to receive you. you now we are located at 3603 Shepherd Lane, Bow Springs, Texas. The zip code is 75180. You can also call our church office at 214-960-1010 if you need a ride to church. We look forward to receive you and to worship with you this Sunday at Abundant Grace Embassy. God bless you. I will look forward to see you. I mean, I can't just wait to have an handshake with you. God bless you, and I will see you on Sunday. All right, over to you, Matt. <laughs> so what am I speaking of? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just so mesmerized. I'm just kidding. I was sitting there watching the video. I'm like, wow, that's a great well, Someone, someone just posted the questions, and when we have a question like that, we attend to them immediately. Someone says, can this be a condition of fiber pills or just, just foods food. are in fiber? I guess this question is directed to my uh, okay. Harry. Um, so fiber pills are just insoluble fiber, which is good for helping waste to move out of the body. That's beneficial. But um, at most, you would only want to supplement half with a fiber pill because getting it from a whole food, you get that um, soluble fiber, which mm -hmm. is specifically protect against estrogen and things and like lower cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So you want both. You want at least get half of it from food and then whatever else you have to do with um, supplements is okay. A natural supplement, though. Okay. Oh, then there's another question that what are the best food, foods I in fiber? fiber. Okay, <laughs> I'll do it real quick. So beans are fiber superstars. Uh, one cup of beans has 14 grams of fiber. Wow, that's huge. And they're mostly fat free. So don't put bacon in your beans. <laughs> um, and then whole grains, and I mean whole, like brown rice, quinoa, steel cut oats, um, teff, um, millet, those have about five grams of fiber per cup. 
Um, and then vegetables have about four grams of fiber per cup and fruit has about three grams of fiber per piece. So like a banana is about three grams. So you can work from there. Beans, 14, whole grains, five per cup, veggies, four per cup, fruit, three per piece. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, as, as I said, <laughs> you, this, the, we, we're trying to rush the program to just fit into it. In fact, we, we should be closing actually right now, but we're going to extend for like five more minutes because we've not even covered like 10% of the questions that we're supposed to treat. And that's why you don't want to miss tomorrow's session. You'll be mm -hmm. able to meet Matt and Kat in person, mm -hmm. live and ask them questions for free. You should be paying for the for that <laughs> sector, but it's going to be for free for you to meet with them. So now over to you, Matt. I believe uh, you have something yeah, yeah. to ask what Kata said. So one of the things that I usually had a guilty pleasure with was I had a, a guilty addiction to cheese. Uh, and then, of course, uh, so that's one food and dairy. So uh, before Catherine. And so I wanted to we're going to talk about that as a food <coughs> source that maybe we're consuming too much of. Um, cheese is actually uh, highly addictive. Um, cows produce a hormone that is very similar to morphine. That's called casomorphine that these mothers, uh, cows actually produce. And it's because what it does, it gets mixed with her milk. So when the cow is drinking the milk, um, the, the calf gets, um, gets a, a slight addiction to it, so the calf will come back and feed. Otherwise, the baby calf is just going to mimic what the adult calves are doing, which is eating grass, but they need more fat and hormones to grow from a little calf to a big adult calf. So there's that little bit of morphine, so the, the baby calf will come back. So when they produce cheese, it's, it's concentrated, so it becomes more addictive. The downside to that eating cheese uh, as humans is that it's detrimental to our health. It's very high in saturated fat, number one. Number two, University of Rochester actually did a study on men who actually ate cheese, increased uh, high amounts of cheese and fat, such as like ice cream. Um, mm -hmm. It actually lowers your sperm morphology, just basically it changes the shape of your sperm and it decreases the motility. So it doesn't, it can't get to its destination so, and motility is extremely important um, because you're asking these little guys to swim a ways to get to its um, uh, final destination and its goal. And if they have low moti motility, they won't they won't achieve that. And mm -hmm. twenty and and basically, and they had a twenty percent lower concentration of sperm. If you think about that, that is that's a pretty staggering number. I mean, nearly one third of your production is actually decreased by eating. Um, dairy or, or high fats amounts of cheese. And what did they do when they measured how much that would came to, like how much cheese or dairy did that equivalent to? It's one to two servings a day. Not very much. I mean, think about one glass of milk or one, you know, a couple slices of cheese is really all it would require for that to happen. Mm. Uh, Spain also did a study that like even increased dairy and processed meats um, actually de decreased your, um, your volume and also your mobility as well. So it just increased your, your infer, increased your infertility. So it's really fascinating how, like Catherine was talking about how fat increases these risks for women in terms of producing too much estrogen. Well, mm -hmm. the same situation is happening in men as well. That excess fat uh, is also decreasing our fertility uh, and sperm production. Um, and the other problem that it does is just even um, one of the elephants in the room for men is that if you're having a hard time in the bedroom, <laughs> in terms of like erectile dysfunction, mm. increased fat actually lowers testosterone and increases estrogen, which uh, prevents you from being able to, which is one of the contributing factors to preventing you from having um, an erection. So if, if erectile dysfunction is a, is a factor in, in this, in reproductive health, then, then this is something that's definitely want to be considered. And this is one of the most difficult things for men to um, discuss. I was dealing with this at some point. My son was even talking about, you know, young boys in school from 16, 17, 18 years old dealing with erectile dysfunction. So, so that's one of the best parts, but fruits and what's, what's a, what's a benefit? Like, where's the good news? Like, okay, Matt, you say I can't eat these things for men's reproductive health, but what's, what's the good news? Fruits and vegetables, as mentioned, Katie mentioned, fruits and vegetables are really the answer. High fiber, low fat. It protects sperm development. It has antioxidants. It's going to help protect sperm development and, and give you overall better reproductive health and function. Um, 
supplements that also help shown to help sperm production actually um like your omega-3s for example um you want to increase your omega-3s from like natural sources like your walnuts your flax seeds chia seeds uh, naturally but you can't increase them by um you know, food sources, uh, carnitine and CoQ10, you can get those through your plant foods as well. Um, but you can supplement them and they're going to also help uh, improve your uh, sperm development because they're rich in antioxidants. Uh, CoQ10 is a really great antioxidant. Um, and so, and other things that we also have to consider is like what other things environmentally that may be uh, causing problems. Copper actually kills sperm. It's crazy. It's a, that's a trace element that we need. But the problem is, is that if we get excess copper, we do not need that, ver that much. So where do we get excess copper from? IVDs. Um, those are implants. If you, for, I mean, I know that some people can get those in, in terms of implants. Pipes. A lot of water pipes are made with copper. Cookware that's also made with copper. Um, that's excess copper that's getting into our system um, and into our body. So you really want to be careful of these things. But um, that you're actually exposing yourself to. Um, and also soy. Soy was one of those things that I thought was like, uh, I'm Korean or half Korean. So um, the the food intake of soy, I never really ate it very much because it didn't, I didn't, I didn't really, it didn't have much of flavor. So Catherine really showed me that, oh no, you have to eat it. It doesn't have any flavor. So I was like, oh, okay, well that helps. Um, and so I started increasing my, my soy. But what I learned is there was, there's a study that was done that men had a concern without eating soy because, oh, it lowers your sperm count or it decreases your sperm count and those kinds of things because all based upon one study, one study was done. But the problem is, is that the, the full study wasn't actually talked about in the, in the news or in the publication that, uh, and that it was reported on that soy was bad for men. But that's actually the opposite. Um, soy is actually very good for men because in the study, it showed that, yes, it decreased the sperm. Um, and Katie might have to help me make sure I get this accurate. It decreased the sperm count, for, but it increased the constant. No, oh, no, no. It, it increased, decreased the concentration, but it increased mm -hmm. the volume. So you are producing a whole lot more. <laughs> oh, no. so, so you end up with a lot more sperm. Yeah. So. Yeah. While your concentration may be lower, your volume overcomes that, which is mm. one of the reasons why Brady came along. Oh. <laughs> wow. 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 I mean, and this is just awesome. Zoom one right last now. thing, if I can, I, I teased it. Mm. We, we have a class called Intercourses, and it's there was awesome. an amazing... There's amazing thing. There's a, a huge oh, benefit yeah. to men losing weight. Okay. I'm just going to one and a half inches, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. one and a half inches. Here's why I say one and a half inches. Did I a get, did I get the spell of the website, right? Food. Yes, sir. That's food perfect. Foodsandlifemeat.com. So yeah. you can go there. You can register for their classes. Uh, so continue, Matt. <laughs> for every 20 pounds that a man loses, mm -hmm. He gains a half an inch in length. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> every 20 pounds, listen, gentlemen, for every 20 <laughs> pounds you lose in weight, why does that happen? You, you gain a half an inch, up to about a half an inch. And here's why. Because the I more excess fat parts. that we have around our midsection, no. it actually pulls. <laughs> and they not healthy enough to provide for a baby. So it's just kind of the same thing in women. Like fertility goes down, it a man physically retracts mm. overweight. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Also, so you say I can't see it because I'm so overweight. It's not because you're belly. <laughs> it's it in. That's wow. a good one. <laughs> but it's, but it's, yeah. yeah. Very quick. Very quick before we go. What do you say? Kat wants to share with what she said before about the okay. diary. Okay, okay. You, oh, you to, yeah, we yeah, want to put on the private chat. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So quick note for women, because I want you to get the whole story. Um, dairy is not just damaging for male fertility. It's it's very damaging for a woman's. It's uh 
it is the single worst thing a woman could eat for fertility as a dairy product. One, because it's just filled with estrogen. It's breast milk, right? Mm. From the cow. And that cow is kept pregnant for nine months out of every year. And so it's just swimming in estrogen. So we're getting all those hormones. But there's another thing with dairy. And this is what I learned um, in all my cancer work. Um, dairy has a one of its sugars is called galactose. And what galactose does, it attacks the ovary. It damages the germ cell. And that's what becomes the egg that's released. It actually actively breaks down the barrier of the germ cell. So it doesn't produce an egg that can be released. And so, so, and it's a direct proportion, um, a study over 27 countries, um, the major countries, uh, the more dairy a woman consumed, the lower her fertility. It's a, oh, wow. a connection every time without a disputable doubt at all. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's it's way too much estrogen and it's got that galactose in there. Even if you have lactose free, that just means that they have broken la your lactose down into glucose and galactose. It just kills. This is the leading cause of ovarian cancer, for example, um, heavy milk drinkers. They have the highest rates. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Sorry for the best. <laughs> no dairy. No dairy. no dairy. No wow, dairy. Wow. We could share wow. stories. I could personally tell you stories that where I've met women who she has taught this information to completely flip their lives in a very short period of time. I, we don't. I know we don't have time for that, but I'm telling you, I've seen I've seen things happen. I've met the women that has happened to just between you know just going plant based, cutting off meat and dairy, changed everything. And, you know, it's for these women and, and I, I can't give you the guarantee, but what I can tell you is that, you know, if somebody didn't actually say this to Catherine, mm -hmm. my, my, my three children that, that we have with her would not be here. That's what I do know. So it's worth a shot. Mm -hmm. hmm. Wow. Yeah. This, this is this is I mean on behalf of our audience, I want to beg you. I know you are so busy with your yeah. schedule. The truth is we've not even we've not even covered twenty oh, percent of mm -hmm. what we need mm -hmm. to. So uh, please look into your schedule. You don't have to give us the answer right now. But we'll be getting <laughs> back to you. We'll bring you back because please. I can see private we chat. Want you back. See, <laughs> see the, because a lot of people cannot really make it to possibly church and they are connected and they are watching yeah. us right now and they want to get the whole of I mean what they can get. And trust me, you might not you might not meet them forever in your life, but trust mm. me, when they when they do what you are teaching us right now and uh, it works for them, even God will reward you for it. Yeah. <laughs> so please, yeah. I know you are so busy. I know you're working on so many classes. Look into your schedule, and I will be I will be getting in touch and to see how we can bring you back. And uh, of course, I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> over to you, Ruth. Thank you so much, Matt and Kathy. We really appreciate you. Honestly, there's a lot, a lot to know, to know, to know. Knowledge is power. Honestly, I, I was just writing, writing, writing. Trust me. And I bet our audience, you know, they really have learned one or two things from you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us on this show. And like my husband said, we're looking forward to having you again on this show. I can't wait, please. Thank you so much. And to our audience, thank you for joining us on this program today. And I pray that God Almighty will be with us all in Jesus' name. As you are waiting for God, for that Isaac, for Samuel, keep, hope, keep that hope alive. It will happen. It will happen. It will definitely come to pass. And you are the next in line for the miracle. Thank you for today. I will see you next time. And, and before before, before we say bye, don't just hold it. Before okay. we say bye, <laughs> just hold it. I usually, I know our time is fast, but it's okay. Yeah. I believe this is worth the time. If right. Matt and Kat can leave everything they are doing right now to be with mm -hmm. us, I believe, right. I believe. And we are not paying them anything. They're just doing this. Thank you so much. Thank thing. you. So, uh, I, mean, I just I just read that Catherine Zemat will teach a whole class on the pennies and how sexual <laughs> 
that was affected by food. I can't wait to attend that class. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know. I know that yes. even <laughs> <all this story. laughs> it's like, no, no, no. I don't so want to do it. Right we love, we love. If you're we love on that call. Uh, we're going to do that even right on this show. But right. before we need go, maybe just a minute. Wow. 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 That's good. Just a minute, I will call it elevation pitch. Maybe somebody, somebody is watching us. It might just be that one minute summary that that person will take home today and that will be it. So uh, let me start with Kat, uh, Kat, uh, Catherine. So what would just be that take home? Just in 30 seconds, one minute for somebody watching us right now that you want to tell that person. Okay. Um, you have to get your estrogen down. Get rid of dairy in your diet. Get your fiber up to 40 grams, hopefully with whole foods. Um, and work on getting your body fat um, down to a normal healthy level. Um, and not cooking with so much fat. Also, my grandmother raised me that you pray like it's up to God, but you work like it's up to you. Oh, wow. 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 Please word. repeat that sentence. Repeat that sentence. <laughs> pray, pray like it's up to God, but work like it's up to you. Mm. Mm. Given us this knowledge and these plants to heal our bodies. And part of this is our responsibility. Right. Because God will not do what we are supposed mm -mm. to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It won't right. come down. It won't you come down to change our diet for us. It will give us mm -hmm. that free will. You to have to do it yourself. You have to do it. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's wow. a good one. Thank <laughs> you so much. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Over to you, Matt. <laughs> I don't think I need to say anything. I think she said it all. Um, <laughs> I, 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 but I, here's what I'll say to to my to my men of, in, on the watching on the audience. You know, I, we've said a lot of things about reducing your intake of meat and, t and reducing your intake of dairy. You know, I had the same problem with that as well. Um, but it changed everything in my life, and it's and it's been for the benefit. And and so, you know, if you're if you're struggling in certain areas, what what's the worst that could happen if you just tried it? I mean, just just give it a shot, and if it doesn't work, then you can always go back. But mm -hmm. you know, we people like good news about their bad habits, mm. and so so they can hold on to them. Well, I didn't like my bad habits because my bad habits could cost my life. And if I didn't change those, then I wouldn't have my sons and my mm -hmm. children. And so I was, I'm very grateful to God that, you know, she came into my life. She taught me what I needed to know and it happened. And we hope that this is a blessing, but I agree eating more fruits and vegetables, less meat and dairy and, um, and uh, lowering your body fat and weight is going to definitely help you in that area too. Wow, wow. Thank you so, awesome. thank you so, so much. <laughs> and before we go, I think it's just good that we just have a word of prayer. Right. Somebody is out there watching and uh, you are asking God that when will I carry my own child? I want you to know that as we keep praying, as we keep fasting, going for those medical appointments, check up mm -hmm. and uh, changing your lifestyle, right. your diet and mm -hmm. everything we add together. Yeah. How, when, we cannot say but just as you have listened so far, the Lord is still in the process of doing miracle. Right. And I know that yours also will come in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this morning. Thank you for Kath and Matt. Thank you for our audience. Thank you for Ruth. Thank you for myself. Thank you for as many that are trusting you for the blessing of fruit of the womb. Thank you for yes. working it out right now. Thank you, everlasting Lord. We just thank you, everlasting Father. All we have to do this morning is that we just mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you because you have provided everything we need to succeed in this life, to live yes. a healthy life, to be fruitful. Thank you for your promise. And I pray for as many that are watching this program, either watching live or they will watch it later, I ask that you will give them testimonies. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Amen. I pray for Martha and Kath. I pray for you will help their business, you will help their children, you will help their vision, you will help their growth. As they just aspire to help many people, God of heaven, I pray that you will help them, O Lord. In Amen. The your concerns in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, dear Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>